Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a trip four hours north up to the Twin Cities in Minnesota so that we can take a quick look at the Free Geek branch they have there. So before we hit the road, let's talk a little bit about what Free Geek is. So Free Geek was started in Portland, Oregon as a way for IT focused individuals to give back to their community. So they accept donations of older machines, of new machines, um, they get grants, but they take these machines and ones that are salvageable, still usable, they give to low income people in exchange for community service. They also have programs to teach computer repair skills to people, and they're really community focused. Anything that they receive that they can't repurpose, or refurbish, or sell in their store, they responsibly recycle. So they're very focused on keeping tech alive, keeping tech affordable, training people in tech, and giving back to the community. So the branch in the Twin Cities has been around for a while. I'm not sure how many free geek chapters there are currently. Um, I did some searching online and it looks like there was one in Vancouver, British Columbia that closed in 2022. Um, there might be some others, but uh, there wasn't really any sort of good listing of which chapters are out there. Either way, uh, I've never been to a free geek and what I'm most excited about is the store that they have on site as well. So they'll sell modern equipment there, refurbished, things that are donated that they fixed up and are reselling. But they also sell vintage equipment to collectors like myself, I suppose. And a lot of the money that they get in comes from this store. So I'm more than happy to go take a look and see what they have and make a donation and get some, uh, some cool retro tech in return. So let's hit the road. So the weekend we chose to go up there was the first major snowstorm of 2023-24 for Minnesota. And we were driving through a winter storm warning, as that sign right there noted. Looks like we are here. Just gotta figure out where to park and how to get in. I think they said the door is on the other side. All right, Lane, ready? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's go check it out. All right, so we made it. Here we are at Free Geek. Now, as noted, the door for the store is actually on the other side of the building. But uh, the door here will take you into sort of their back area where they do the work, uh, which worked out great for us because then we got to take a quick look at stuff they were working on. Um, you know, if we'd just gone into the correct door, then we wouldn't have seen some of these areas. So... Uh, this is a self-guided tour. I'm um, just trying to get our bearings here, but they've got big signs telling you where to go. Um, this is kind of the front desk and just checked in with the guy to make sure we were supposed to be back here and he said it was fine. Looking in this room, that is where they had all of the people working on the machines. I didn't want to film it. I didn't want to get you know people who uh, hadn't consented to be in, on video on that clip. But here we are in the store. So over here, this is on the middle shelves, modern laptops. Um, just kind of walking in, taking a look at things. Also, apology for some of these camera angles. It was trying to uh, look at the stuff as well as film it, and I just kind of got engrossed at looking in things. So if I just made you dizzy, I apologize. Um, but anyway, back here is the retro computing area. So they had some Macs here. Here's a Performa, uh, a Duo, and a Duo Dock. Um, I think the Performa was 150 with the monitor. The Duo Dock was maybe 225. Um, there's an AT&T system that looked pretty neat. Uh, an iMac G3 over to the left there. Um, I guess I liked that AT&T system. I was just kind of staring at that for a while, huh? Uh, down below, some more vintage PCs. This tower here kind of caught my interest. It was, uh, on the bottom left there is a gateway tower. Uh, I think they wanted $20 for it, but oh, that monitor in the middle, black and white, uh, claims to have a really nice picture. That one got my interest. 
uh, Mac Mini. Uh, I don't quite remember the price. I'm sure you can see it. I, I'm having trouble on this voiceover of seeing prices, but uh, some MacBooks. That one was 80 bucks. Nice and bright for me to be able to see that. Um, and then a bunch more vintage systems down underneath. And there's Lane playing with the uh, the iMac G3, which is funny because we got a bunch of those at home. But she wanted to play with that one there. That's all cool. No worries. I think she's uh, figuring out how to move icons around on the desktop. Um, just some more generic stuff. Uh, a few more modern Mac Minis uh, between 100 and well, between 90 and 110 dollars, I guess. Um, I was kind of interested. I don't, I don't have a Mac Mini of this generation, but uh, I'm also not sure they're worth that much to me. I'm sure they're worth that much to somebody, but not really my thing. Uh, there's a Power Mac down below, a couple of G4s. I'm just watching Lane have a good time there. Uh, really, at this point, it's like I'm a kid in a candy shop. There's so much stuff, and I'm just so interested. Uh, there's a Compact Portable 1 in that brown suitcase, and I have two of those. So I didn't need that, but they had the manuals for it, which I thought was cool, but I don't think they were willing to sell just the manuals, but I didn't ask. I didn't want to break up the set. Yeah, and there's the uh, Power Max down there. That's a, uh, I think that's a 32-inch cinema display. 30-inch, 23-inch? Yeah, 23-inch. Um, and then there's the smaller one over there and a, a white uh, iMac G4. And you're coming back to this tower here. So it was 20 bucks for a, a gateway or 35 bucks for a gateway. And it's a huge tower, full tower, really interested, but just too big. Some other generic beige box machines there, uh, more vintage stuff. Um, just kind of going around looking at everything. Another gateway desktop up there, like the one that I have, kind of. Um, and then down this row, they just have all kinds of cords for everything. Uh, AC power cords, USB cables. Uh, there is mice of varying types, uh, you know, really anything you need. The prices were all super decent. Um, they had a row of monitors here. If you needed a monitor, they got lots of those for cheap. Um, some uh, gaming console stuff, uh, a bunch of Xbox and PlayStation games. Um, then on the back wall, it was more AV-related stuff, and then over on... The far side here, next to the AV stuff, it's kind of uh, more, um, I think, stereo equipment. And another monitor that I thought looked pretty neat, but didn't get it. I'm not sure why I keep grabbing the camera like that, but that's all good. Um, down there was some more keyboards. There was some zip drives. I'm checking them all out, see if any of them are scuzzy. But that one is parallel. That one is parallel, and that one's parallel. But you know what? I, uh, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna get that one. That's five dollars for a parallel zip drive. That's not a bad deal. Um, no cord, no AC adapter, but still not a bad deal. Um, there's a big box of miscellaneous ISA cards there, ISA cards. Um, I took a look at those, and it was mostly network cards. And then here, I handed the camera over to Lane. And I told her to go take a look at anything she thought was interesting. So she liked the wall of monitors. And I'm watching this for the first time too, so I, I don't I don't know what all she found interesting, but she is definitely attracted back to the uh, retro area as well. I think she's going to show us this iMac G3. Yeah, she is. I'm not sure what she found on it, but it looks like it might be the media player. She's got all the icons arranged and selected, so I think she's pretty proud of her work there. Oh, and she's showing us the, uh, the the puck mouse that comes with it. I think that was Blueberry, not Bondi Blue, so that's one of the newer ones. Um, it's not the original iMac. Um, then, yeah, there's the modern laptops and the sales counters over there. Uh, back to these vintage machines here, back to these cables. And uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to give away something that I decided I did want to pick up here. I'm just kind of staring at it, thinking about it. Uh, you know, the white iMac. I've got the Intel-based one, but I don't have an iMac G4 in this form factor. And what, it was like $35? $20, I don't quite remember, but uh, it seemed like a pretty decent price. So I think uh, I think she caught me in the act here of uh, making a selection to go along with that parallel zip drive that obviously won't work on it. 
Yes. Uh, anyway, they got a bunch of stuff up at the counter, a glass case with more valuable things and, you know, just more cables and... Uh, it looks like a nice case over there, some more other cases and some media. I think she liked that case because we have a very similar one at home. Oh, and then a nice shot of outside so you can see the snow coming down. Another look at some of the uh, stereo equipment in the corner. Boxes of things. Alright, and then she's going to give us a quick tour here of some of the, uh, the AV equipment. I think she really liked the uh, rotary dial phone. They are kind of foreign objects to kids these days. I don't know that she's ever seen one in person before. Um, another quick tour of some of the AV stuff, cases. So, you know, really they have uh, a varying inventory depending on when you go. Um, you know, they get these donations. Oh, there I am with the iMac. Busted. But they get these donations in, and the stock is always different. You can't really predict what they're going to have, but if you're into computing at all and are looking to get something, they probably have it. First up is this iMac G5. I think you saw me picking this one up in the video and carrying it over, so probably no surprise there. 20 bucks? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Not suitable for internet. We'll see about that, free geek. What else did I get? I got a parallel port zip drive. I've got some SCSI drives that have failed, but not the mechanism, just the logic board. And I can do a gut swap and put this mechanism in those drives, and it was five bucks and worth a shot. I also got this 16-bit network card. It's like 3COM 3C509. Basically, everything that supports ISA has drivers for this card, so it's a really useful card. Also five bucks. And then I picked up this black and white composite monitor that claims to have great picture. They didn't have it running there, but uh, it looks pretty cool. I think it'll look really nice on top of an Apple II. Uh, I'm not sure if it was like a security monitor or something. Um, the black and white composite monitor I already have. Uh, different brand, but it was a security monitor, so I think this might have been something like that, or maybe, you know, with the handle, maybe it was for, like, a, I don't know, traveling roadshow or something. Don't know. And the last thing I got were these uh, Lab, Tets, Lab Tech speakers. Uh, they were in the free pile, and they're labeled works, but fuzzy, and there's no, uh, no power adapter was included, but that's no problem. So, yeah, that's the haul. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you in the next one. Hi, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. And watch more of our videos later.